All right. Um, I want to thank everybody uh, for being here um, in this uh, for this elections integrity. Or actually, we're now renaming it to the poll watching committee. Um, I just I really appreciate all of your participation. Um, this is a really important part of the election process um, where we are concerned about um, ensuring the integrity of the election. And we do this through you know, our rights as citizens uh, watching and monitoring um, how the election is, um, the processes are, are, are run uh, within the clerk's office and without the clerk's office and um, all the different, uh, <clears throat> the different systems and who's doing what. This is by us as citizens monitoring this we are bringing more transparency to the process and ensuring that we have um, you know, integrity in these elections. I, I know for myself, um, the integrity of the election is absolutely critical. I think that um, if we weren't able to do this, I would have no confidence in our election system. But the fact that we can be here on this call right now and that we can do some of the things that we're going to do brings me a lot more uh, confidence in the, in the process um, I'm not going to say it's perfect, as, as you all know. Um, there are we can always improve, um, and I and obviously there's 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 things that we've identified that could be improved upon. But that's not the point of this call. The point of this call is to organize ourselves as poll watchers and to monitor, um, you know, as in, in this sense, in, at this point, monitor as a party the process. Um, now each one of us are citizens, but. If you're a part of this committee, if you're a part of this poll watching committee and you're given, we're gonna talk about this later, if you're given a, a the, the paper that you know I'm signing my name to saying that you're representing us, you're now representing the Republican party uh, of Salt Lake County. And so I just wanna reiterate that right now, I, I, that, that it's critical. You're no longer just representing yourself as a citizen. You're also representing the Salt Lake County Republican party. And so, um, you know, I forgot to introduce myself <laughs> to those who don't know me. My name is Chris Knoll, and I'm the chair of the Salt Lake County Republican Party. Um, and I've asked Eric Swanson to chair this committee, but I just wanted to kind of start by, by making it clear the role of this committee and, and what you uh, will be doing and committing to uh, if you're helping us. And um, so first of all, again, thank you for, for all of you being here. Um, now, I, I just uh, wanted to say this before Eric kicks off, but um, I just got off the phone with uh, Sherry Swenson, and um, Sherry and I, we have these interesting conversations. Um, that's that's probably the best way I could put it. Um, you know, obviously she feels attacked and, and we feel that, you know, things could be done better and whatever, you know, we don't need to get into too much more detail than that. But something I'm going to say right now, and I don't think anybody on this call would be, would do this, but I just want it to be known, especially in this recording, we never we never support or, or um, approve of anybody making any kind of threats to anyone. I don't care if they're Democrat, Republican, um, I don't care if they're Nazis, we don't threaten anybody. Um, and unfortunately that, that was the case recently. John, and, um, I don't open think, the door. That, um, sorry, can you mute for a minute? I don't know who that was, but I, I just wanna make it clear, um, we don't threaten, we don't, um, we, we treat everybody with the utmost respect. Um, I don't think anybody here would do that, but I'm saying this more for the recording in case somebody else comes on and wants to hear it, that they can hear this too. It's it's not so much for the people here, because um, I, I think I know a lot of you and I know most, I, I believe that you have the utmost integrity and the reason you're here is, is to ensure that the system is, is working properly. Um, I explained to Sherry that, that we absolutely don't condone what happened. Um, in fact, if if uh, uh, she's willing, I'm going to help her go after that person um, legally. And uh, I, I just just want that to be absolutely clear. Um, there's there's never an acceptable time where we can we can make threats or um, or do anything like, to that you know of that nature. Um, we, we're representing the party. We're representing um, our freedoms. Um, I love our country and I love our state and I love our county. And I would never want to hurt any of our candidates or any of um, any the, any of the process just because one person made a, a poor decision and said some things that were threatening. So I, I, again, please don't take it as an attack on anybody here. I just feel like it has to be said. 
So um, thank you again for all being here. Let's, um, I'm gonna let Eric uh, take over. And um, Eric, if you can uh, go ahead and, uh, and uh, explain what, you're, what you've got ready for us. And um, again, thank you for, for your willingness. Okay. So first of all, Mark, I, I, I'm gonna apologize ahead of time. If, if your dog and, and my cat decide to get into a tiff while we're on this call, I, I have no control. I mean, this this cat bullies me all day while I'm working from home. Um, but just to start off, uh, so as, as Chris mentioned, my name is Eric Swanson. Um, I live here in in South Salt Lake County in in uh, in Bluffdale, um, and I've lived here for the last eight and a half years. Um, and during that time, I, I've done a few things, you know, a uh, few smaller things in the party, such as. I'm currently a, a precinct chair and and have uh, previously been um, county delegate for a number for a number of years, um, and I was grateful to to find um, you know that Chris was able to uh, find some some areas where I could continue to help the party in, in some more depth. So I'm looking forward to this effort that we have for this very important responsibility that we have, as as Chris mentioned. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about, if I can get in my right places, because my cat has been messing with stuff. We're going to talk a little bit about, uh, um, Chris has kind of given us a, a, a good kind of summary of the purpose, and we'll probably not spend too much time in there. We're going to talk about some general guidelines. We're going to go over um, the the things that we need to know and understand is, uh, on a general level for, for poll location watching. And also for ballot processing watching, but we'll talk a little bit how how we'll be doing scheduling, um, as well as how we plan on doing reporting, and then give you some links to some resources to start off, and then hopefully you uh, you all will will volunteer some time and 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 connect up with the Telegram group where we'll be pushing some more some more resources your way to help you be better prepared um, for this upcoming election. So as, as Chris kind of mentioned, this is, this is really kind of ensuring election integrity by us observing and verifying um, that the processes are being executed as designed and that through the oversight that we provide and the feedback that we provide, um, we can make sure that our elected officials are aware as well as the public aware of how our elections are being run and the confidence that they can have in them. Um, so first of all, some, some quick guidelines. So as you volunteer, some of the things, um, bring clipboard, note paper, red pens, no blue or black. Um, the, the, uh, we should stay about six feet away from the staff. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that, that in, in uh, some more detail. Um, well, if my cat doesn't let me sit on my space bar. Let's see if we can get back to the right spot. Um, we should, our, our goal there is to observe, to observe, record, and report. So while we're there, we shouldn't be um, trying to question or correct the staff. Um, we should write down our findings and report those issues to the committee. And also um, urgent, urgently, you know, report them directly, and we'll give you those those numbers so that we can so that we can call and intervene if necessary. Um, there's to be no pictures or any of any of the material that contains voter personal information. And lastly, last couple of things um, aside from no partisan campaigning, there's there's laws on the books that uh, limit where you know signs, shirts all those campaigning type things can be done near a polling place, um, a distance, you know, some distance away, but also that we should be familiar with the statute governing the poll watching. Um, and we'll give you a link so that you can get a copy of that to keep for your own reference. Uh, I, let's see. And I, I included a little bit there um, that talks a little bit there from the code that a poll watcher may not record any activity if the recording would reveal a vote or otherwise violate a voter's privacy. 
Um, we can't interfere with the activities that are, um, are described in this subsection, except to challenge an individual's eligibility to vote under the section if, if you have basis and should not divulge any information related to the number of votes counted, tabulated or whatnot until that information has been made public. Um, so looking at kind of these different activities. So first of all, with poll watching, so our job is to, is to try to validate that the voting process is executed as specified. Um, there are eight early voting locations that are available over um, five days for the, uh, for the county offices, uh, well actually nine days for the county offices and then four days for seven other locations throughout the county. Um, and those are, so the early voting at just the, uh, at the county office building is the 25th through 28th and the 31st. And then um, on November 1st through 4th at seven more locations um, in addition to the, to the county office. And those are only happening during, like at the county offices, it's happening during uh, business hours. And then only from like three till seven at those other locations. On election day, however, there's 41 different polling locations uh, throughout the county. Um, and that will be, and, and polling happens from 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. So our hope is that while we don't necessarily want um, or need people to be there 100% of the time during these shifts for the poll watching, we do at least would like to have people sign up and, and drop in um, or, and spend a little time at, at that polling place and, and maybe even take a couple and that are nearby and drop in at each of them. Um, we have it allocated in four hour shifts, but we're not saying that you should be there that whole four hours if you don't want to. Um, time spent at these locations is not as important as creating the anticipation that we could be there, that we could come, um, that, that, that people are looking in and checking to see how they're doing. So kind of just coming from the code, that what the code says is that a watcher may observe the setup and takedown of a polling place, observe a voter checking in at the polling place, and observe the collection, receipt, and processing of the ballot, including a provisional ballot or a ballot cast by a covered voter as defined in the section. Any questions on, on kind of the poll location watching? Yes, I do have a question. So, so yes. first and foremost, um, sorry, this is Shannon. Um, so we had last polling experience during the primaries. It was more like a pilot. Mm -hmm. um, we do need lockers though, um, with folders, irregularity reports, even though we're not gonna speak up and say anything to the poll workers, obviously, but we, um, I do want to have like a red pen, you know, handful of red pens, folders where people can pull irregularity reports that are blank and fill them out and return them to the lockers when they're done. Shifts that literally have so and so is doing, you know, two to four, or so and so is doing from twelve to four, something like that, with schedules and shifts, and then something yeah. where we can fill out a report. Shannon, Shannon I'm going to interrupt you for just a minute. We. Um, I appreciate that. Let's let's talk about that offline. Um, I think at this point we've got, you know, th those are some good suggestions, and we might implement some of those. But um, I think we're we're going to go forward with what we've got in this for this recording. Let's let's kind of stick to this. If you've got a question, absolutely ask. But um, as far as the process, Eric, that, that Eric's working through right now, um, this is what we're going to be using. Um, I, I again, if there's a suggestion that you want to make after the meeting or something um, that we might consider will absolutely listen, you know, take that into consideration. And, and actually, Shannon, those particular things, those are, that's good that you mentioned that. Um, <clears throat> we do want to look into what we can do on that front, but that's specific more to the ballot processing where those lockers, there's not lockers available at all these other places. If, if the, uh, the actual casting your vote locations, as far as I know. Um, any other questions on poll location watching? 
So this is just a general overview look at the what's happening. We're not going to mm -hmm. see ballots particularly. You're not at, at these poll locations where people are casting their votes. So there's two types here We're talking about where people are casting their ballots. And then we'll talk in the next slides about where ballots are being processed. So obviously you shouldn't be watching people cast their, you know, looking and seeing how people are voting on their ballots. Right. Um, you can, as it mentions here, observe, you know, how they're, how they're checking people in, making sure that they're checking for ID and going through the established process there, making sure that they are properly handling those ballots as they're turned into them after the people vote, um, that they're not giving any extra instruction that they shouldn't be giving them. Um, these type of things. So this is, right now we're just talking specifically about those that go and watch at places where people are casting their votes, whether that be during the early voting or during actual election day voting at any of those 41 locations that, that I, I mentioned earlier. Okay. Okay, so I'm sensing no more questions on, on this particular point. Um, or at least on this, this aspect. I'm sensing that many of you are more interested in this one. Um, and that is the ballot process watching. So as we know, ballots are, were mailed out today, supposedly. And um, on this coming Friday, they'll be performing logic and accuracy testing. And then after that, there are 11 business days between that testing and the election day where ballots are being received and possibly processed. So, and as well as during election day and during a canvas period afterwards um, from the 9th to the 21st of November after election day. So this is where we, where we need volunteers to go to the county clerk's office um, We'll see what we can do if the lockers are available. I've, I've heard some things about um, some other reports saying that the lockers weren't as helpful, um, but we'll see what, what we can do on that front. Um, but we're looking for up to four volunteers uh, for each of the four hour shifts. And that, so for a morning and afternoon shift in the, in the days before the election, for a morning, afternoon, and evening shift on the day of the election, as well as uh, people that are available to, to do morning or afternoon shifts in those days after the election, there at the polling place. I'm not at the polling place, they're at the county clerk's office where they at the election center where they're doing the processing. Um, the county is required to give us 24 hours notice before processing any ballots or going through any of those things. Um, uh, Chris, do you know, you know, how reliable is that, that notification? Um, well, I'm assuming that we should just have people there or people available um, despite that. Yeah, what, what we need to do is we need to have people sign up. Um, if, you know, 24 hours, you know, comes due and they, they don't uh, notice that they're going to be processing any ballots, then legally they're not allowed to. So um, <clears throat> we will... Uh, we will have to watch that and just ensure that, you know, if, if they, if they don't say that they're going to be processing, processing any ballots, then that shift will, will basically have to be canceled. Um, and we need to document that. And, and I think what we do is we take some screenshots and things to make sure. And if we're, there's any concern, um, then we, then I will call the County clerk's office and validate uh, what the website says or doesn't say. Okay, thanks for that clarification, Chris. Um, so first of all, on one of those, if you sign up for one of those shifts um, or for the the, the other um, voting location pull watching shifts, we will get you credentials. Um, you know, a sign a sign letter from from Chris saying that you're representing the county party. Um, you'll check in at the county clerk's office with your ID and with that letter. And there they will give you an, a lanyard and then you'll be redirected to the exit, the election center. Um, 
it seems in the last couple of elections, they've been implementing a yellow brick road. So a, a yellow masking or yellow taped area where observers are allowed to be. Um, I've heard that there are maybe some discrepancies between those that yellow brick road and um, the statute that says that there's a limit that they can be no more than they can't hold you back any more than six feet from uh, observing any of these activities that that we'll go over in a minute. So if any of these observable activities cannot be done from the designated area, you need to contact us so that we can uh, inquire with the with the clerk's office and see if we can get that rectified. Um, and this is kind of this is the statute. So a water, so kind of continuing on where we were from the previous one about um, the place of voting, a watcher may observe the transport or transmission of a ballot that is in that is in an election official's custody, observe the opening and inspection of a manual ballot, observe ballot replication, observe the conduct of logic and accuracy testing as described in, in the section, um, which is what will be happening this Friday. Observe ballot tabulation, observe the process of storing and securing a ballot, observe the post, a post election audit, observe the canvassing board meeting, observe the certification of the results, observe a recount and observe or observe the signature verification. So they have to, in, in this other part of the statute, they have to permit uniform non-discriminatory access for a watcher to observe each stage of this process. And as it says here, no further from, um, other than 4D, which is the transport, and 4K, which is the canvassing board, um, no further than six feet away. <clears throat> and then there's also this other one that's saying that there are some things that they're using a computer screen for what they're doing. Uh, they need to project that activity onto a similar screen that's large enough to be viewed by each of the watchers. Which as I understand, for those of you that have been there before, that they had that going on and they were projecting that in, in another room, is that correct? The, they project the um, the adjudication process, and yeah. um, I think it's the adjudication process in the main room while they're doing it in another room that's behind glass. So you can kind of see where they're sitting and what they're doing in that room uh, through the glass, but then what they're doing on the screen is actually projected up on the screen. So it's it's maybe not the best setup. I'm not necessarily thrilled about it, but it is it is what they do. So yeah, and it's within the within the statute. Yeah. Um, so we've kind of honed in on three key areas that we would we we think are the most prone and prone for error um, and and in need of uh, observation. The signature verification. So we need people to to kind of to watch that signature signature verification happen. You know, after they've taken the the ballots out of the outer envelope and they're and they go through and they run it through their signature processing machine and they look at all the um the exceptions to that um they're supposed to go through those and and hand verify and decide whether or not it's a close enough match even though the machine said no or not and so we need to note instances where your judgment difference differs from the staff um just note that down and if you're seeing a really high frequency of these of of these mismatches being accepted um, that you're concerned about, then you need to contact the the committee. With regard to ballot duplication, so if there's any ballots that are that have damage, whether that be stains or tears or whatnot, um, that they think would interfere with them being processed through the uh, the scanner, then they will go and they will make duplicates of those and then handle the duplicate um, for processing. So we need to make sure that those duplicates are handled correctly, that there's only a single duplicate, that both the duplicate and the original are, are properly handled. Um, and note any irregularities in that process. 
And last, as Chris mentioned, the adjudication. So when it goes through the machine and they find out that, um, or they see that a ballot that's able to be processed by the machine has errors, such as um, unable to determine which, you know, which candidate was voted for in a particular election. Um, and this is where they would review on that screen. We would like you to make sure to, to note the types of issues that they end up adjudicating. And if they're accurately interpreting from your understanding, if they're accurately interpreting the, the voters intent. And of course, if you're seeing, you know, a pattern there to escalate that to, to the committee. Uh, let's see. Shannon, you had a question, another question? Yeah, I think Chris might ask it in a second. Um, no, so as far as like the um, adjudication process and all of that, that is all fine. Um, so the last poll watching experience we had, we had a vault, meaning the vault means there is a closed door with no windows, we cannot see in it, they store the ballots and ballots are coming in empty and full at the same time. We cannot view the ballots, we cannot see what's going on behind the doors. And so my question would be, how do we handle the quote unquote vault? I'm not saying that we have to enter the vault, but I'm saying we should be able to see in the windows or have some sort of viewing process, kind of like we do with the adjudication process. Um, the vault is something that we just don't know what's going on with. There's so many trays of ballots going in and out. There's no way for us to like actually pull watch when we can't see into that room and it's closed door. They use it as a staging area. So we see yeah. go in and we see empty envelopes come out. Okay, so I, I, that's a really good point. I know that's been brought up before. Um, why don't Eric, why don't we make a note of that? And I think what we need to do is um, let's have a conversation um, among us and the county council, uh, a couple members of the county council or possibly even the lieutenant governor and find out, you know, my, my concern is they're gonna say that's part of storage and based on the law, that's, you know, by putting it in there, that becomes storage. I, and, I, and I realize that that's kind of a very um, <laughs> loose interpretation <laughs> of that. So um, let's see if we can't get uh, some kind of agreement that if somebody's in there, maybe the door stays open, we can watch from the outside or something to that effect that, that allows us to observe anytime anybody's in that room. Yeah, as it says here in, in uh, whatever point I, I'm not, I'm not a lawyer. Um, so I don't know how to properly reference it. Observe the process of storing and securing the ballot. So while we may not be able to stand watch over them, we should we should have some visibility into that. So we will. Yeah. They're not we'll storing follow. them. They're moving them in and out. It's yeah. Okay. Well, let's. we Yeah, I, I understand, but but let's let's. Um, it is part of the process. I, I this let's be super careful about. Um, what we're. I, I, look, I, the main thing is we need to not um, create a hostile situation at all, um, or even the appearance of that. Uh, we need to be, and I'm not, I'm not accusing anybody of that. Please, uh, please understand. I, I, I really appreciate all of you being here and, and all that you're doing. I just want to make sure that that um, let us handle that from a, from an administrative or or a um, another perspective where we go through the council and 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 possibly the lieutenant governor's office and see if we can't uh, or maybe even with sherry you know she's actually been very um open to some suggestions uh, as of late so um so maybe we we figure out the best way to handle that and explain why why that might be a concern so yeah let, we'll, we'll their, work on that their concern was literally that they cannot keep ballots on the floor and they are trying to protect identity um, stuff. That's fine. We don't expect yeah. access. We're not asking for the door to be open. We're just asking to view from afar through a window what's going on with that. So I totally yeah. appreciate that, but we should be able to access and, and see from afar. Certainly. Yeah. And I think, I think it's fair to ask that if somebody goes in that room, that the door remain open so that we can at least be looking into the room at any activity that's happening. I think that would be a fair request. So let sure. me 
let me find out if if that's possible and um we'll we'll figure that out so shannon Thanks. thank you for for bringing that up yeah any other questions that we have on kind of this ballot process watching i'm going to send some links then some of you have, have clearly done this before um roy did it did a, a two-hour video for the primary i'll send a link to that for those of you that that ha that haven't seen that and and are interested in in that um and as well as some of the other materials you know like the floor plan although the floor plan may change as far as the stations that are being used um and some other some other guideline documents that we'll we'll post up to the telegram after the after this meeting in, in the next couple of days. But any other um, high level questions around the ballot process? Watching. I have a uh, when Please, we tried to watch signature verification, they wouldn't let us close enough to see. Correct. Okay, let's make a note of that as well, Eric. Um, yeah. It, when you say not close enough to see, I mean, unfortunately, the law says, well, the law is a little confusing because it says we can't get closer than six feet and we can't get further. They can't keep us away more than six feet. So that's very, uh, <laughs> very odd. Um, We're or, talking a hundred feet where you can barely see chicken scratch. Uh, yeah. And that's okay. And that's, so, yeah. but let's, again, let's take that one to them as well and, and explain our concern and see if we can't come up with some kind of resolution. I agree. We need to, I don't know that we need to, uh, gosh, well, we certainly can't use phones or, you know, or cameras and that's not what we're asking. What we're asking is we need to be able to see it to validate that we would agree or disagree uh, with the signature um, verification. Is that, is that what you're saying? Yeah, there's a big difference between six yeah. feet and watching them from a glass window yeah. and then being saying we have to stand 100 feet away. There's no, no way I, that a poll watcher can no. <laughs> verify yeah. a signature yeah. no, that, 100 that, feet away. And, and so so to clarify, again, what I'm what I'm saying is we're asking that we can be at least within that six feet so that we can at, at least attempt to view the signature well enough to, you know, maybe not perfectly, but at least partially tell if that signature is close, is a close match or not. So. They, told us, they told us we couldn't look because it was voter information on the screen, which it really is. Yeah, that's like, not, that's not what the law says. So um, yeah. we'll, we'll make, we'll clarify that in writing with Thank them you. and, uh, and get that, uh, get that uh, resolved. Yeah. Awesome. It, it's, it's, clear that, it's clear that the law states, doesn't state anything about not being able to see that information, it's not being able to capture that information that's right the of the law. Yeah. Okay. Which, which by the way, may mean that we need to make our notes accessible to them um, before they leave the office. So, because so they can verify that we're not capturing through our handwritten notes any personal information, which we should never do, by the way. There's never a, a time where we should be doing that. Yeah, nobody's taking handwritten notes, and nobody's taking Perfect. pictures, and nobody's taking videos. We're just literally verifying signatures. That's well, it. No, notes are fine as long as they don't include any personal identifying information. So, okay. Um, okay. Any last questions on the on the ballot process? Observation. Okay. So as far as scheduling, and we'll provide these links. Um, if 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 there's one link that you get here, and we'll try to send this out to all those that that received the invite, and and even some of those if we find that there are some of those volunteers that didn't, um, we'll send out these these links. Um, first of all, we've got a, a sign up genius that's for the voting for voting observation, the poll location watching. Um, this one right now only has uh, the early voting, and I'm I'm still in the process of pushing the rest of the rest of the time slots for those for those 41 uh, locations on on election day. Um, but please go ahead, and you can go ahead right now and and sign up for any of the early voting days if 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 um, if you want to be available for that. Uh, the second one for the ballot processing watching on. That there's a link for that, and um, you know, sign up for you know a morning, afternoon, or 
evening on on election day session um or one of the evening session late afternoon evening sessions at uh, some of the some of the early locations oh that was for the previous one sorry i'm getting myself confused and lastly this you know as i mentioned this link for joining the telegram so we can push updates to to those of you that are volunteering um so we'll provide for those that sign up and get you know are scheduled for a shift we'll provide credentials um so that you can go and take those to the you know to the county clerks and to the polling places with you one area where this is uh, I might, I wanted to mention this earlier, but I didn't think it was the right time when Chris was talking about um, about this. Is the statute gives preference to those that are representing um, political parties, those that are designated by candidates, and those that are designated by political issue committees. So if they have too many watchers, and this is how you will be different than the average citizen that goes to watch, the statute makes it so that they have to give preference and make room for um, for people that are from those three groups that I just mentioned. So this is why it's important um, to get that credential um, and, and bring that with you. Chris, anything more on the scheduling that you want to bring up? Um, no, I think you've addressed it. I think we're good. And last, by the way, re sorry, real quick, just so you guys know, I'll put the links in in the chat in just a moment, so that you guys can click on them or copy them. Um, I'm gonna wait just a minute until we make one more clarification on the Telegram. So, but go ahead, Eric. Yep. Um, so reporting, take notes of any irregularities that you observe or questions that you have about the process. And then we'll feed those back to the county. And like like you mentioned today, you know, in this in this meeting tonight, questions around vault access and signature verification. These are things that we'll take back to the county and, and get clarification on and make sure that they find a way to accommodate us that complies with the statute. Um, send provide notes to the poll watching committee leads. Uh, these notes and if there's any urgent issues I put my name for now but we're probably we may change that um, depending on how we want to do that but I have my contact information there both on telegram email and uh, and my phone if you need it but we'll probably add some more contact information um, to the uh, to the telegram or to any of the email communications coming from here Jessica you had a question Hi, I think you can hear me now. Sorry, I was late. Um, I might have missed this, but my question was: if we go as nonpartisan, I'm concerned about the ballot mules and the boxes. So I don't know what I missed. I'll go back and watch if I can. But if we're a certain amount of yards away, are we able to? Let me take it. Unraise my hand. Can you unraise my hand? Um, are we able to watch as the nonpartisan? Um, I'm just concerned about the ballot boxes is my biggest thing. I'll mute myself. Yeah, I, I believe so. Um, I, I believe you can, you can observe. I don't think there's any rules on, on that. I don't know. Um, uh, it's a question that we have probably to the county is, is how we can observe or at least review, um, those ballot boxes that's it's the ballot boxes you're talking about the drop-ins at, at say the city halls and stuff i think we have some questions that we need to review with the with the county on whether or not we can go back and review the the surveillance footage of that um each of those are supposed to have um a semi-useful view from above um which is i guess better than no view but um we're hoping to see if we can find some some way to access that you shouldn't actually have um, any problem with observing those those ballot boxes? Obviously, you know, not being close enough to tamper with them or possibly intimidate any voters that are trying to drop off in those. Um, as a citizen, we're not going to be concentrating our efforts there specifically on on live watchers organized by the party. But um, 
Chris, do you have anything more to add on that? Yeah, I, I just want everyone to understand, you know, I, some of the things I'm saying is, is not because I don't trust you guys. It's because I don't necessarily trust everybody that's around us. There's, there are people who are, who are watching very, very, very closely to make sure that we dot every I and cross every T, because if we don't, they're going to use it in the media and they're going to use it against our candidates. So when I'm saying these things, it's, it's really to protect our candidates. They, we have to win these races. Um, and, but we have to do it with integrity and we have to do it legally. Right. So, um, uh, but my, my point being that they're going to try to accuse us in any way they can of cheating or trying to manipulate or false, you know, make false claims. So the only way that we can be 100%, you know, uh, transparent and, and show the integrity of, of what we're doing is by being 100% transparent, right? And so um, that's why, I'm, you know, for example, I've asked everyone to use their first and last name on, on this, this call. Um, when you join Telegram, I'm gonna ask that everybody use their first and last name and know that this is a public Telegram group. And be perfectly honest with you, it's very likely that the media will join the group or, or be watching this group um, and be taking screenshots of everything that's said. Um, so just know that that happens, it will happen. Um, so every word you type, everything you say, um, whoever you're close to in the clerk's office, and if somebody, you know, or, or if you're getting close to a, uh, um, a ballot box and, uh, and somebody says, well, I tried, to, I tried to go put my ballot in there and they were too close, they're gonna use that. So let's do everything we can to follow all the rules and, and not cause issues for our candidates and, and for, you know, we want everyone to feel comfortable voting, right? We want everyone to come away. I'd love to, I told Sherry today, I said, wouldn't it be great if we could both stand up there and say that we have 100% confidence after this election? I said, you know, it, it, the more transparent you are, Sherry, and the more transparent, you know, the, the Lieutenant Governor and everybody else is about this process, the higher the likelihood is that I'd be able to do that. Um, but we don't, we won't get there if, if things are being hidden. And, and that goes for us too. So, um, we just please, please, please do everything you can um, to to stick to the rules 100 percent. Everything is a, everything comes down to our integrity. So I probably went on too long, but <laughs> no, I, no, I, that's I, fair. So really quick. So if anybody from this group gets an outreach from media, where can we direct that question to you? You say no comment. And if you need a comment, call Chris Null. Nobody else speaks for the party. Nobody. And that's in our bylaws. Understood. So can you post your email and phone number in this chat so people can direct them appropriately? Now, know that I'm giving you my number. Um, that doesn't mean call me all times of the day and night. <laughs> um, but this is for media purposes or any time that Eric's not available and it's an emergency, okay? because um, we all have day jobs too. I just, I'd, I'd like to speak up just on, the, on that point. Um, I, it's something I've had to train myself as well to do is that Chris is, is, is the leader of the party and the face of the party has a lot of mouths to feed. So I, I, I generally uh, contact him only when I absolutely have to or when he contacts me. Thank you. Um, oh, I missed some of these questions. Eric, if you want to keep going, I see some, there's some more questions. I'll see if I can't answer these. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you know, we just have, uh, we'll try to, I've, I've got here posted and we'll try to get these links into the telegram, um, including the mail-in ballot processing PDF from the county, the poll watching instructions. This particular code that I've been quoting throughout this presentation, as well as you know, a link to the, the bill that, that created the most recent edits for it. Um, the, uh, the video that I mentioned um, from Roy previously, and then we're also going to try to provide some affidavit samples that you can use, or at least blank forms that you can, you can print off and, and use um, should you need to, to uh, create an affidavit during your, during your observations. And we'll, we'll come up with more resources as we go.
Yeah. Um, so the question Susan asked Eric and Chris, if we see urgent issues, should we text you at these numbers? So let me put it this way. Start with Eric, please. If it's urgent, if it's urgent. Um, sorry, Eric, I'm, I'm going to speak. <laughs> um, please start with Eric. Um, I, I will also be available if it's truly urgent, but know that in most cases, you should be able to annotate or, or make note of either a ballot ID number or a batch ID number. Um, that should be sufficient to track down any issues um, in most cases. That's not always going to be true, but in most cases. Um, and so do your best to, to make note of you know, um, a person's name that's that's doing something, don't talk to them, don't accuse them, but just to make a note, um, you know, uh, uh, take note of the batch that's that's being, um, you know, that, that's, that's in question, um, or a, there's box numbers, um, things like that. Take notes of those things, um, and then let us handle it from a legal perspective. Unfortunately, um, we there are times where if, if you, um, if, if you say something, you know, even with the best of intentions, um, they're going to use that to then keep the, the, the or, or to keep uh, us from being able to inquire further, right? And so we want to be able to have, be able to go to them and say, look, our, our people just made a note of this. We'd like you to look into it. Um, and we'd like to sit down with you and, and be able to look at, you know, the, the situation. And as long as we've done everything that we need to do to to maintain the integrity of of, of this, you know, poll watching, um, then there's there's no reason that they could deny us. Yeah, another a little bit more on that. Um, I really encourage you guys to look at the you all to look at this look at the code. Um, as fun as it is reading things from the legislature, but there's some key things in there um, that if they determine that you're violating any of those things. And this may all just come down to the type of day that person's having or, you know, what their general personality is versus yours. And they, they may take offense where maybe they shouldn't have, but um, they can eject you from, from your, from, from the location and from watching. And under some circumstances, they can even charge you with a third degree felony. Um, so I encourage you to read through what what these what the guidelines are uh, in more depth. We've tried to kind of skim over a lot of them during this. Um, but as Chris said, you know, I, I think our safest bet here is to to you know not interact if if you can help it and to take notes, get those get the IDs that you need, you know, for for batches or for ballot IDs. Take notes of what you observe, um, making sure to keep personal information out of that, and and then pass that to to us as as urgently as as is required by the situation. Yeah, not trying to beat it, beat it at horse here, but that's kind of why I brought up the issue I brought up earlier. With we're not supposed to call them out. We're not supposed to say anything. Um, we're literally supposed to observe. And so having a locker with, you know, blank reports and a clipboard so that even though we're not saying anything to poll watchers, we can write it down in our memory because, you know, days, weeks, months can pass and our memory doesn't recall certain dates or things. I think that just having something for the poll watchers to say, all right, I held my cool. I didn't say anything. I didn't do anything, but I wrote it down the day and time of that would help people recall certain details that they might lose over the next few weeks or months. Um, that's why it's so important to, to nail that down. I wasn't trying to like go into detail or beat a dead horse, but it is very important to have that. It is. No, and I appreciate that, Shan. That's a really good point. Um, and I, and I, I thank you. Um, let's, um, we will, we will, if there's additional instruction that comes out of this, we'll make sure that that gets out in an email to everybody. Um, and so I'd be happy to, uh, to, to address that after this call, this training at this point, though, we need to, this is a recorded and I just, I'm just trying to keep this as brief as possible. So that others can come into the recording, can watch this and can walk away feeling like they know what they're doing. So um, I just posted the telegram link. Um, just remember, like I said before, this is not a private group. 
Uh, the media are likely taking screenshots of our communications. Just keep that in mind. And uh, everything will be used against you. <laughs> um, as, as if you watch anything that Brian shot or any of the other Salt Lake Tribune uh, put out, it's, it's always an attack on, on us, right? And so just expect that and, and let's, let's not give them any ammo whatsoever. Um, and uh, let's just uh, do, do our best. And I, I'm, again, this is not accusatory to anybody. It's just so that we can walk away from this with our hands clean. And if they do try to use it, it just makes them look bad, right? So, yeah. and and just to kind of reiterate on that, I think I think any of you that have, have looked at any of the mainstream media or whatever you want to call them, people are being primed right now to see us doing the worst in this election. <clears throat> yep. Um, so as much as we can do to to do our jobs, to keep our responsibilities, and to hold them accountable while proving them wrong, I think goes a long way right if, if you've all seen you may have all seen those uh those uh, uh signs that went up in the last couple of days that uh say that we're you know don't don't vote for republican extremists right um let's you know let's prove them wrong like eric said so um there was some other links that we wanted to put here uh eric are you able to copy and paste those in there um right now in the these ones in the chat the one the one earlier that was the uh the sign up yeah i so i'll be okay yeah i can i can pull those my, it just helps yeah okay let me see oh, if my cat will let me <laughs> seems to like to i think your cat's a democrat trying to interrupt the party the, the meeting. <laughs> my cat is an anarchist oh um, okay <laughs> that's even worse <laughs> yeah it my cat is uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay let me get some of these in here hello hello hi so oh, i yeah i have never done any of this before and i'm not even really good with zoom so all of these resources how are we going to be able to um access them so with so we're gonna send out some follow-up emails as well as okay. the telegram group that we've put here in the chat okay um and from there you should be able to access these resources okay so it'll come to us in an email that's one vector yeah okay thank you because i just point and click because if i get near the keyboard the cat's going to make this very difficult or at least more. My cat would love yours. Um, so Chris and Eric, really quickly, mm -hmm. um, after this call is finished and completed um, and the recording is done, can we stay on for a second? Sure. Um, Thanks. If, if there are, please, if you've got other questions that, that other people could benefit from, ask them now. If not, uh, we'll stop. If we don't get any more questions, we'll stop the recording and then we'll have a little bit more open conversation. But please also know that uh, I think somebody mentioned that even this call, could be, um, you know, somebody from the media. We don't know, and we so we just, you know, let's just remember that at all times. Um, yep, understood. So, are there any other questions that we need to address during the recording? Say hello to the media. <laughs> Let them get your picture. <laughs> Make it a good one. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go ahead and, and um, stop the uh, recording then.